Greetings and welcome to our daily walk through the scriptures for April the 14th. Today's readings found you in Joshua chapter 11 and Joshua chapter 12, Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 37, Psalm 84 1 through 12, and Proverbs 13 5 through 6. Today we're going to touch on uh, Luke chapter 17 and we're going to touch a little bit on Psalm 84. Now as you look at Luke chapter 17, you you see Jesus healing 10 men with leprosy, and then you see Jesus start talking about the kingdom of God. And this is what I want to focus on today, uh, because uh, we just had this eclipse. And if you're watching this video, uh, whether it be just a few days after it or watching it a year from now, uh, there were a lot of conversations about the end of the world. And, and this seems to happen a lot. You know, I remember in the year 2000 and Y2K, um, I remember, you know, there've just been all these different things where when something big happens, like the, just recently, even with Israel and in and, and the invasion of Palestine and those kind of things, people will use those as apocalyptic signs that say, the end is here, the end is near, the end is near. And they'll use Matthew and, and the Olivet Discourse and they'll use Revelation and they'll go to Daniel and Ezekiel and they'll start saying, and here is this and it fits in with this. Ultimately, Jesus says this, for the son of man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. In other words, it's going to come quickly and without warning. No one can stand there and watch the sky and go, lightning's going to strike now. It, it doesn't work that way. We, we don't know when lightning, we know what, what creates lightning, but we don't necessarily know when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. We can't predict it. We don't predict where it's going to go. We can't do any of those things when it comes to lightning. This is the reason why if you're at a baseball game and uh, lightning strikes 10 miles away, you got to stop the game because you never know if lightning is going to come 10 miles because apparently it can. We don't know when it's going to happen. And Jesus gives a couple of examples of how suddenly things happen when it comes to God's plans. Now, when I say suddenly, I want to be very clear that God has already anticipated and created these situations, um, but it's people that were not willing to look and see what happened. Just in the days of Noah in verse 26, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given up in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. So in other words, um, people had no idea. If you knew the world was going to end tomorrow, would you get married? Probably not. You would, depending on your worldview, would either go and party it up like it's 1999, or you're going to go and do everything you can to urgently tell people about Jesus. So, so you don't know when it's going to happen. It was the same in verse 28 in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. The people of Sodom had no idea that it was going to be this way, that it was going to end. They went about their daily lives. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the housetop with possessions inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. In other words, don't look back. Don't worry. You need to focus on what's coming. This, however, should give us urgency. Uh, urgency being because we don't know when this is going to happen, we could spend our time looking for signs or we can spend our times being assured within ourselves that we are doing everything we can every single day, being ready for the day the Lord has made. In other words, when you wake up in the morning, what's your first thought? Is your first thought to begin the laundry list of things you're going to do? Or is your first thought, God, make this day a day that honors you. Make this day a day where I serve you and glorify you. For most of us, it probably is the list of things to do. But if we can discipline ourselves to think the other way, if we can remind ourselves of what this is, that this is the day that the Lord has made, and literally there has been no other day in history that has been like this one. This is a unique day in history never before happened. And it's a day for us to start fresh and to serve God and to be prepared, then we don't have to worry about signs and wonders and things like that. We don't have to worry about them. We know that they'll happen, but on that day when it happens, we will be prepared and ready. Okay, that's our thought for today. Have a blessed one. We'll talk next time.